online learning has meant a revolution in education in general and of course in higher education. Last year, the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid joined EDX. EDX offers interactive online classes and mocks from the world's best universities, college and organizations. MOOCs are part of a fast-growing movement that seeks to open up elite schools to the masses and improve their teaching. By taking pedagogy to the next level, they have the potential to cause disruption in higher education. It is certainly a privilege to have the opportunity to have with us a pioneer and an expert in this field and to listen to his talk. So what are the trends that are leading to this disruption? And I want to highlight three of them for you that other, interests, other industries have seen and education has seen. The first is just massive scale of adoption. YouTube claims a billion unique viewers, six billion hours of video watched each month. I'm going to give you a personal example. What you see on the right is actually a lecture that I recorded when we, on open course, where put up videos of our class about eight years ago. My older son, who's 26, um, pointed out to me a couple of days ago, he said, Dad, I want to let you know your first lecture has been viewed 2.2 million times, which is pretty nice to know. Second big trend, which is important to higher education, is the demand for disaggregating or unbundling products. Apple completely disrupted the music industry. Right? You don't buy CDs anymore, you buy individual songs. It's unbundled. We need to think about that for education. And finally, and if you can't read it at the back, the blurring of boundaries. I will tell you why MIT did this and why we partnered with Harvard. There were three <coughs> reasons. The first is the one that you see in the press, the MOOC, the Massive Open Online Course. It is to expand access to education to learners worldwide. And I will tell you very carefully MIT's view on this. We want to make available to those learners with both the capability and the desire the opportunity to experience an MIT difficult course. We're not driven by the market, we don't change what we teach, we don't expect everybody to succeed at our classes, but for those students who will not win the lottery and get admitted to MIT, we want to give them that experience. But that was actually the second reason we did it. The primary reason we did it was we wanted to change how we teach on campus to our students. And the third reason is big data. We wanted to mine that massive amount of information to really learn about learning, to run experiments to help us understand how do students learn and how can we use that to 